Thank you, Chris, and uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's an honor to be invited. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, give you an idea about what's going on in real time in, uh, in some of the industry arguments about, about cloud computing. And I, I chose to, uh, to take a fairly provocative stance because I think that there's some challenges that need to be faced uh, straight up. The first issue I think I want to do is I want to tie some things together that you might think have nothing to do with cloud computing, and then all of a sudden you'll see why as I go through my presentation. We've got some fundamental issues that we have to face, all of us. We, we need a sustainable planet. What we're doing is we're finding out we've got a global warming problem, and we're finding that there's also a trillion-dollar industry in IT that's um, basically out of control. It's overly complex, and we're finding that cloud computing is essentially the canary in the mine in dealing with some of these energy issues and some of these complexity issues. So starting from that perspective, um, let's take a look at what uh, NIST defines as a cloud. Um, Irving already very eloquently described what he thought the cloud descriptions were, and they're very consistent with these, these definitions that you can see here. Very co commonly, um, infrastructures, platforms, entire platforms, software, if I was to define cloud computing in a single sentence, I would say it's outsourcing your IT. Whether you're a consumer at home, or whether you're a small business owner, or whether you're a, a, a medium or a large business, outsourcing something um, is, is a way of finding a more efficient way of doing something because someone else has more economies of scale, for example. And the reason why we're outsourcing IT is because a lot of people are tired of it. It's a mess. As Irving pointed out, many of the applications are ugly, the architectures are a disaster, and we're facing a complexity crisis because of this. But the person who did most of the work in defining what cloud is was Nicholas Carr. There is a book, if you're interested in reading it, it's a fascinating read, that's called The Big Switch. And what he does, he's, he draws a, an analogy with the way that Edison, for example, um, was very good at his electrical engineering, at building generators, at winding coils and playing with magnets. And he suddenly realized one day, if he wanted to have a much bigger market for his generators, he needed to invent the light bulb. <laughs> and so what we have here is, is a push and a pull. The light bulb is the consumer that, that, that makes the market for the product that you're trying to sell, which is the utility. So think of cloud computing essentially as an information utility. That's really all it is, and the reason we want to push it off is because we don't all want to have generators in our backyards. We no longer want to deal with the, the, the maintenance of these things. We want to just push it off and let someone else handle it. So that's really what it's all about. But let me tie this into something else that's going on right now. This complexity problem I'm describing to you, I, I've been studying for many years, and I, I did some um, investment when I was a vice president at uh, one of my larger companies before, and, and learned about complexity theory and sponsored the Santa Fe Institute, which is where I met uh, uh, some of the people here. And, and what I've done recently is I've discovered what's going on in terms of, of complexity. There is a, a book out by uh, Joseph T T uh, Tainto, who is um, a fascinating writer. Um, it's, it's a book about history and anthropology, and it basically shows that civilizations collapse under their own weight when the marginal cost of some new addition goes negative. And at that point, there is a, you go over a cliff. It, it all collapses. The complexity doesn't, it doesn't happen slowly. It happens very quickly without warning. That's an important message. Now, it might be that we're, we're far too large as a civilization now for the entire civilization to go that way. But the point I want to make here is that we have to find a way to counter these forces that cause all the complexity we have in our lives. And this is what's pushing us towards clouds, is this complexity. How do you solve these problems? Well, you solve it through real ideas and real innovation. And what's happening a great deal right now in the cloud computing world, and the reason why there are so many crowds, everyone is into cloud computing because they think it's the next big thing and they can make lots of money out of it. But I'm going to coin a term right now and call it cloud washing, which is what a lot of very large companies do. They, 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 they paint their existing products with this new cloud um, message and try to sell that. My, in my impression, that's not real innovation. That is doing what large companies have always done, and that's defend their territory and incrementalize their existing products 
without creating new innovation. What I believe fundamentally is there are some serious problems that have to be solved and they require some serious real innovation, not the smoke and mirrors kind that has been, has been uh, applied to the market so far in cloud computing. Now, it's not just civilizations that collapse. It's any economic entity can collapse because of, of uh, too much complexity. And this has happened uh, a number of times. We've seen various failures happen in the cloud computing world so far. Uh, some of them are fairly famous and some of them not so famous um, about where the systems suddenly don't work anymore. My personal experience that gave me my um, passion around this was and having to deal with the aftermath of 9-11 and how long it took us to recover. It took us about three and a half weeks at Veritas Software to recover what should have been recoverable inside about eight or 12 hours. And that was a shock to me. And I realized the problem was a complexity problem. So what are we dealing with here with complexity? You can go to Seth Lloyd and look at his uh, 288 definitions of complexity, but I'm going to give you a much simpler one. Just think of three different scaling factors that just get worse with complexity. One of them is, goes linearly. It's the number of moving parts. How many of these things do I have? Do I have one application or do I have a hundred or do I have a million of them? Um, how many consumers do I have? How many files do I have? This is the kind of thinking you can put into that linear curve there. The second is how are these things connected? When things are connected to each other and they have to behave as a larger class of system, then they, they exhibit this kind of uh, state management that becomes a quadratic. It goes into an X word. And then the third problem is really all about diversity. When, whenever you look at a, what a mathematician would call a power set, you're essentially dealing with things that are not substitutable, things that are unnecessarily different and diverse. And when those things come in, all of a sudden, you end up seeing that exponential curve that takes you far higher than anyone else. Now, let me put this in perspective for you and show you why large enterprises are concerned about this. Because if you were to draw a, a, along the, a time axis along the bottom here, and then a, on, on the, the vertical axis here, we're just talking about a CIO's budget. How much money he has to spend every year. Now, I know that it's going down a bit these days, but, but imagine for a first approximation it's a, it's a straight line. What happens is when you look at these complexities when they tie together, the first thing that happens is things that are linear tend to dominate. And this is what we've seen in hardware. Hardware is very encapsulated items that you can just stamp them out and sell more of them. And it works very well in that blue area that you see. And then we saw in the industry happen over the last 10 or 15 years, this huge bulge of value propositions that came out from software companies. And I was in the middle of that. And I appreciate software very much because it, it provides great margins and it provides a great opportunity in order to be able to, uh, to add value in ways that can be much more complex than just hardware can. And this is because software deals with the connectivity. It deals with the, the, the zoning and the LUN masking in a, in a storage area network or with the ne network connectivity and the client-server connections. That connectivity is what software is all about. The third one, however, is the diversity. This is, and there is no solution to diversity. We've already used hardware and software. The only solution to diversity is people. And so what happens is this complexity turns directly into a people cost. And that's what's happening around the world, everywhere, not just in all the largest data centers and even in smaller companies. It's happening in your house. How many of us like to go home and have to deal with our daughter's you know, PC that's got viruses on it and things like this? This is a serious problem. Things do collapse when they get overly complex. And so I want to leave you with that, uh, that, that, that view there and point out that we have a, an, a, an, a, an amazing happenstance right now with so many things happening at once. The perfect storm, as I call, call it. Um, this exponentiating cost of complexity tied in with the experts who know how to run IT systems now that are retiring. Um, the baby boomers, um, are no longer going to be around or, 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 uh, or be able to fix these systems when they go wrong, especially the COBOL systems. Um, the fewer IT graduates coming out of universities, the fewer immigrants to bring their IT skill, skills to this country, and then we have an economic downturn. This is um, a picture of, of what happens um, in an, an organization, and the poor CIO who's trying to be the captain of that boat uh, is faced with this problem. And there's a reason why uh, the word CIO is, 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 is often inferred to mean career is over, because you're really going to get one shot at this. And, uh, and it, has the, it has the fastest uh, turnover ratio in any, of any executive position in any company anywhere. So I'm suggesting to you here there's a problem. 
This fundamental problem of complexity needs to be faced, needs to be looked at, needs true innovation to solve it. Because, as was said a long time ago by Thoreau, men have become tools of their tools. So, the crowd in the cloud. We've got, apart from virtualization, which is the way of um, putting a, a, an operating system that thinks it's running on real hardware, to logically put it running on a piece of software instead, so that you can run many of these different operating systems and applications on one machine now instead of on separate machines, that's virtualization. That is really the driver of what's going on, and it is a true piece of innovation on this piece. That's the driver of what's going on, but the rest of it, in my view, is water vapor. And this is the, the statement that was made by Larry Ellison just a few weeks ago in Palo Alto when he talked about this. So I believe that we need a revolutionary approach to, to, to solve the energy and the complexity pr problem. We truly do. Uh, we, we can't keep on incrementalizing our products and our software and our ways of doing business. We need true innovation. And I want to point out one major flaw in almost every vendor's products that I've seen so far. It doesn't incorporate a solution to the security problem. Until we solve security, I don't believe there is going to be a widespread adoption, adoption of, of clouds as anywhere near its potential to help our society until we solve the security problem. And this isn't just you know, trying to find a better way of doing key, key management. It needs a fundamentally better solution than we're doing right now. So, looking at clouds, um, applications combined with virtualization is called virtual computing. Recently, Cisco has introduced this idea of unified computing systems where they combine the networks and the computers. And basically, that's all about the, 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 the customers saying, I just want one throat to choke. I'm tired of everyone pointing the finger at someone else when I'm trying to get my systems to work in the shop. Hewlett Packard has done that recently. They've also announced their version of, of a unified computing solution that has also incorporated storage. But one of the problems we have here is, is storage at the bottom. It really is the ugly stepsister. What happens is it can take 15 minutes to provision a new virtual machine on a, a server infrastructure. And it can take you two weeks to provision the storage for it. So there's a problem there. This is why my company is, being, is trying to deal with this issue. And what we really realize that we need is we need to have the, uh, the advantages of the existing kinds of storage. DAS means directly attached storage. Storage is storage area networks, which is a fungible pools of storage. And NAS is network attached storage, the things that you put your files on, your Microsoft Word files and your PowerPoints. But this is what's needed to make cloud successful. They need to be fundamentally self-organizing. None of this human beings having to manage one entity at a time in order to be able to move forwards. They also need to be geographically distributed. A lot of vendors right now essentially are disguising what is a, a centralized solution and calling it cloud. So if you're relying on a centralized solution, you're guaranteeing that you're going to run into trouble because it will inevitably fail sometime. They have to be truly distributed. And then finally, you've got to have integrated security. So I would, um, I would say look on the top right-hand corner of this box here and you'll start to see an image of what cloud really is. It's pools of things that perhaps are at some higher level than just these, uh, these uh, blocks that we play with on a disk. They have some kind of semantic interface and an API that you can manipulate in a transactional way, not necessarily the database transactions, but in a way that can be consistent. And we now have a, a solution, a, an idea of the kind of things we put there. What my company is doing is building something of this kind. We have solved, we believe, the security problem. And we didn't use computer science or regular computer science to do it. Um, we also found a way of making these things self-organizing so that they can solve the power dissipation problem and use orders of magnitude less power dissipation than they are right now. And one of the, the things that raised this issue for us over the last few years is talking to various government departments. And I don't know if you know this, but uh, the doubling period for the US government's usage of energy is six years. Every six years, they double the amount of energy they use. That is a, a shocking phenomenon. And they can't go any further. When they want to build very large data centers for some of these agencies on the East Coast, they have to build nuclear power stations next to them. <laughs> Something has to change. We can't keep on um, adding energy 
uh, 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 to this problem. We can't keep on putting carbon dioxide in our atmosphere if we're going to have a sustainable solution. So we build on a server infrastructure, the hardware infrastructure, we, we build a cellularized solution that allows you to put the virtualized systems on top of that. What it means as far as the utility is concerned is you've got some kind of desktop interface which works with whatever professional is using the desktop. You have signed some kind of cloud interface. This essentially is the information utility, the generator that Nick Carr talks about when Edison was trying to build a utility, and this is the informational light bulb. We need both, and guess what? There is no one company that's going to do, do them all. We have to work together. As Irving has already pointed out, standardization is utterly essential for this to be solved. And to create a green infrastructure, what do you need? You need something that self-organizes. We we when we talk about data temperature in, a, in, a, a, uh, in an IT environment, we don't talk about things being hot and cold, we're talking about how recently or how least recently the data has been used. But if you tie that particular phenomenon in to the way that data has been pushed backwards and forwards in an automatic tiering system like this, all of a sudden you can now turn one knob and say, I want to reduce the amount of power dissipation in my systems. And it will more aggressively spin down the disks on the, near, on the nearby systems. And then it will spin down the entire systems at a great distance when they no longer are needed. And on that point, I think I'll, uh, I'll hand over to my colleagues to continue. <laughs>